Good evening everyone. Welcome to day four of the Friendly Junk Journal People um, little blog thing that we're doing and it's called 12 Days of Junk Journal Gift Ideas and today it's Shaker Tags and I've used two different kits today. I've used Linda Israel's Christmas Peacock again but I've also used Louise Heinzel's fully snappy dad and as you can see these are gorgeous um snow globes so I, I got really quite inspired by them and i thought they'd be lovely for shakers and then i've also used this kit here by tracy fox and it's called creature christmas labels and the words come in three different colors and there's some fab words in here. You've got Holly, Yule and Elf up here. And then you've got Snowman and Gingerbread, We Three Kings, Silent Night, Holly and Ivy. You've got your turkey in here and your candy canes. And there's some fab words in here. There really is. And she's done them in three lovely, lovely colours that you can cut up and use. And of course, she's got the numbers in there too. And then you've got another sheet, which has got little tiny tags in and little bits and bots that you can put on your tags when you're making them. And they are really lovely. They are perfect this time of year. They're not over the top Christmas, but you've also got several different color shades in there. You've got your traditional colors and you've got the more colors that we tend to use now, the more pastel colors. So those, that's one set of hers and I'll link that as well. I then, after yesterday's doing the envelopes, I've got a couple of more pages that I've used from using the stencil this one's the flourish stencil and i'll link that below and obviously that's how the stencil comes out and then you've got your mop-up pages and these i used the glittered angels on yesterday and i've used those on my tags now with linda's uh christmas peacock yeah, there's a beautiful one in there that i've shown you before of this beautiful peacock and in this one i've put some pretty little um sequins some lovely little blue uh, snowflakes in there and there's some gorgeous glitter and the glitter is nouveau i've used the nouveau on this one and these are actually peacock colors and this is the one i've used here um, and i've used a bits of the other ones as well i've also used today some adorn bivvy's gorgeous opal sparkle and this is fab this stuff is absolutely beautiful i love the way this one shines um and i've also used some flocking and yes i did throw the tub across the floor so there's not much left in there um i'll have to need to get some more and then i use things like sequins from nouveau and little gem bits and things like this and I know you all have these sort of things hanging around indoors that you've collected over the years different bits of sparkle and different stars and you know you get your Christmas trees don't you and you, you know all sorts at this time of year that you've collected over the years and they're all absolutely brilliant for doing shaker cards with now this one I've used Louise Heinzel's on and I've put that gorgeous flocking in and some of the Dawn Bivy opal sparkle in this one and obviously these little labels are all from Tracy's lovely kit and there's Rudolph, the wording on there. And then this little fella here, our lovely gnome, I've, I've put some gems in this one with the opal sparkle. And obviously the backing are my mop-up pages and my stencil pages that I've used on all three. And then after that, when I was playing and I got the was using um, Louise's kit, I decided that uh, you could actually make some really, really pretty. Let me just put them out there so you can see these properly. You can make some lovely decorations for your Christmas tree. Now these have got the sequins in, and that gorgeous opal sparkle on that one from Our Dawn. And all I've done is just added a little bit of lace round. Now remember, when you're making these, if you're going to put your string in or your ribbon, make sure before you put your back on to put it in first. Don't go, otherwise you're going to have to tape it to the back. And you can see here where I've used the mop-up cards on the back. 
to stick it together. And this one has the opal crystal in again. And then I've used um, her powdered crystal, which is a lovely, lovely glitter. Really nice white glitter, that one, in him. And that's your snowman in this one. So I thought, well, when you're making your lovely glitter tags, you might want to go further and make something pretty for the tree for somebody. Um, when I did the snowflake swap, what I actually did with these ones was I put the ribbon on the back, but I used some um, paste on the front, some glitter paste to make it look like snow on the front and again turned them into um, tags. So, you know, that you could hang on the tree. So let me show you how we're gonna make these today. First of all, I got some packaging. And packaging that I've got, sorry, my son's turned up. So <laughs> that's what the blank bit was for. Um, so I've used some bits of packaging. This is quite a thin card, you know, when you get your packaging, when you've got your boxes coming through. Um, I think they were for plates that came or something like that. And I'm going to cut this up to make a tag. Now, when you're making your tag, think about how wide this is going to be. And you want it to sort of have a little bit of a, a gap around it, don't you? So we need to sort of come in about here. And the lovely thing about packaging is you can see the lines as you go up. You're not going to have to worry about it not being straight. Are you? So that will work really well on there. Now, this one's, because it's quite a small tag there, I'm going to just chop a little bit off the bottom. I don't want it to be quite as tall as the packaging, because I think that will work better. Yeah, that looks better, doesn't it? Depends on what you're actually putting on your card, doesn't it? Then I've got a little, you just lit, literally just cut your corner off. And once you've cut one corner off, this is your corner, and then you mirror it over, and you cut again. And that's my tag. And that's all ready. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick some paper on the back here. So I think we're gonna go, I think we'll use this one this time with the, with the blue to catch the blue from there. So all you do is you just get some, I've been using the Fabri-Tac today carry on with him. I have found with these sugar bell bottles that sometimes they get clogged up but it's right inside it's you know you get that little bit that's a little bit dry right inside even though you, you put your lid on all the time. So it's a good idea if you've got your pokey tool around or a nice long needle doesn't happen very often but just on the other occasion but it might be the weather as well because we're we're really really cold you know we've got you know one degrees and it's going to be about minus one tonight and we are expecting snow so maybe tomorrow we won't need a shaker car we'll have it outside instead um one of the lasses who does admin for Friendly Junk Journal people, popped a picture of her mum and dad's house into the group yesterday. And oh my goodness, it is absolutely beautiful. Your typical, beautiful, stunning winter wonderland. But that's over in America, that's not here in Scotland. So that's your tag base ready. Now, the next thing I do is I work out roughly where the centre is and I mark. I find with using this particular crocodile that it's quite dark under there and sometimes with the light you can't always tell exactly where you're going to be punching. Make sure I've got it in the right place that I'm actually punching. So I find if I've got a little mark I can get it in there really really well. Now I'm going to pop in a silver brad my black box. Oops. Silver ones are disappearing down the bottom. And pop that in quickly. 
Now, obviously, you don't have to use a brad. What you can do is you can actually just uh, take the lace or whatever you're going to be using. If I just show you a little bit like this. And what you can do is you, you pop it on and you can actually staple it on or glue it on. You don't actually have to do this bit. Um, if you're going to staple it on, then you just need something to cover up the staple. In the right place, um, beam home. So that's my tag base all ready for the rest of my cards. So now we're going to the shake of it. Now I'm using old packaging <clears throat> and I find it's brilliant. Uh, this one's thinner than what I've been using today, but it's still great. Now, if you use a tumble dryer sheet over your packaging. When you put your glitter in, you're not going to have that problem of the um, glitter sticking to your packaging, you know, with the, the static electricity. And this really works great. Now, what I do is I just put a tiny bit to make a pocket, you know, a little sort of pocket ready to pop your stuff in. Some people put the glitter on first. They just pop it straight onto the card. But I like this way because then I'm not likely to go throwing it all across the floor. So what I do is I do this bit. So I've only glued like this bit here. So I have a little wee pocket that I can put my bits in and then seal it up. So I'm just going to take that top bit off there. I don't actually cut it right down to the edge until I've got everything inside. Just give it a chance for it to glue down properly first. Right, and then it's a case of deciding what I'm gonna put in it. Now I have some quite pretty flowers and bits like that that are actually the same sort of coloring as that bauble, and I think that might be quite nice. You see in here, there's some butterflies and there's some flowers and things like this. I mean, I know it's Christmas, but you can put anything in, can't you? There's a blue star there. There's another blue star there. I think these might be quite nice. And there's a flower. These are all the same sort of colouring. It's quite thick, that one. So I think they might be quite nice to just to pop in today. Do something different. I'm going to pop them in first. Now, when you're doing your gems, make sure your gems are faced upright because it's so easy just to, to just put a handful in and then you've got all the backs, so you're not going to see the colour of the gems that you're popping in. So I'm going to pop a couple of gems in as well. stuck on my fingers. Oh, just get that bit of glue off from the fabric deck. Now I don't really want the yellow so I'm going to take the yellow out. But those colours are perfect and what colour have I got under here? Green, green will be great. So when you're popping these in make sure you've got them the right way up because otherwise you land up with the back showing. Now the, the traditional way of making a shaker card is that you use the foam around here you know the 3d foam but obviously because we're making these for junk journals you can't have that thickness because that thickness will just take up all your the space in your journal and we're already making crocodile mouth journals as it is we really want to keep that that down don't we so i'm going to put some of this pretty stuff from our dawn baby. Now mine's quite old um, from when she was on the craft channel but she still does all this and she has a lovely website so I'll link her website below. There. I think that's quite nice it's all sparkling together in there isn't it? I know normally also people tend to use a lot of white glitter don't they? 
the very fine powdery white glitter. And something else that you might like to use, which I absolutely love using at Christmas, is the Flower Soft. Um, I used to use a lot of Flower Soft in the years past. I think it is just so pretty. Um, Flower Soft actually do the domes, you know, they're like the plastic domes, and also Tonic, they do the domes as well. So you can make quite a really spectacular, stunning card, you know, with a really lovely big dome on the front. And Elizabeth Craft, she actually does dies that actually cut out a snow globe. Um, I've got them as well, but obviously we're not making cards today, are we? We're making junk journal things. I am so enjoying doing this, and I'm loving watching how everybody is interpreting the makes, you know, because you just get a little couple of words and it just says like today shake a tag card you know so you then interpret that your way and use whatever you want to use um obviously oh linda oh my goodness she's made some just incredible things um i'm not actually going to stick this on by the way because i want to sew round it i have sewn round all mine and when you sew round, it just gives it a little bit of extra on top of the glue to stop all this coming out. And it's more what I would say as a junk journal tag. You know, sewing on tags and cards and that is really a junk journal thing, isn't it? I've had to try very, very hard to stop myself sewing on my Christmas cards this year. It has been a struggle because I automatically go to sew things and it's not easy. You know, you have to get the other head on, don't you, from what you you know you used to do. Um, and I also usually sew all the way around my tag. But because I've got the sewing on here, I thought, no, I, I don't need to do that this time. I'm doing, you know, come back a bit. So I will just show you this and not actually attach it. But these little pockets, they're so much fun. They really are. Oh, they're lovely. And that's going to go on there. And then I'll find something from Tracy's labels to add to this. I've buried the ones I'm cutting out from <laughs> with the ones that I've been showing you. So let's have a look and see what we've got here that would be really pretty on that one. Actually, that nice one there with the angel Christmas greetings, I think that would be really lovely, wouldn't it? Now, when I did the Christmas decoration ones, um, what I did was, obviously, I've got the top bit, I've cut that out, and then I've stuck it onto the mop-up pages. Now, the mop-up pages are about 250 GSM. They're, they're quite a heavy weight cardstock. Um, if I actually flick it, you'll be able to hear it. It's a really thick cardstock it's not just a thin cardstock that i've used which has given us the substance to make something like this you know to make your decoration you know it's quite it's sturdy you can't bend it you know it's really quite a thick thing so it's going to be okay on your tree um but when you're doing this you're making a tag your little pocket doesn't have to be that strong you know you can use like your 160 gsm you can use your you know your printable weight um card that you would use to run through your machine so where am i cutting him out am i uh the funny thing today was i've been making these this morning and getting the prep bit done first and what do I do? My shopping arrives. So we call it messages up here. When you get your shopping, it's called, you, you know, your messages. So you've got your messages or you're going to get your messages. And um, so that, that arrives, my, my Sainsbury's delivery arrives, which was great. And um, I'd got some more of the caster sugar, but it was it's the one... The, you know the one that's slight like a soft brown color caster sugar and what I did was I'm filling up my kilner jars anyway I'm quite happy and I've put the bits away in my cupboard it wasn't a big order it wasn't very much 
and um, I come to sit back down again and there's this mound on the table here. I don't know how I've done it. I don't know if there was a little hole in, in the back of the, um, you know, in the bottom of the bag. I have no idea how I did it. So I very carefully with a spoon took off the very, very top bit of it and popped it in the kiln jar. But I didn't dare go down too far just in case there was still glitter on the table. Because I thought, I don't think anybody would appreciate having that in their cakes this year, you know, crunchy glitter cakes. <laughs> so I was like, I don't, I still don't know how, how, it, how it happened or where it they came from. Yeah, I think that one would be really nice. I'm actually going to take a little bit more of that black off, actually, because it's because the cards are um, they're more pastel, aren't they? Uh, I'm just going to take a bit more of that black off. Yeah, I think that'll be a bit better. Yeah, yeah that looks better, doesn't it? So that's us getting our shaker cards done. I'd love to know if you've made any of the things or are you are going to make any of these things. Um, because obviously a lot of you lasses are doing the 12 days, uh, not the 12 days, your December dailies. And the young ideas that are coming through from the 12 days, and there are a couple of other 12 days going on as well. Um, and there's Advent ones as well happening, aren't there? Little, you know, different people doing. I know our Tina, Shabby Dabby Doo -da, she's doing a lovely one as well. But all these ideas can be used and made for your December daily. So that's the tag, and then all I need is some fluff out the top. And I've got some bits over the back here. Uh, let's have a look. I think this paler green would look quite nice in there. That'll actually go with that, wouldn't it? It goes with the green on there. And then maybe, let's have a look. I don't know if this purple would be too much. What do you think? Yeah, it looks like that purple today. So I'm just going to cut that ribbon. This is just seam binding. And that can go in the top. Our seam binding here is very, very different from the American seam binding. Our seam binding is, um, it's cut on the cross of the fabric and the sides are ironed flat in. So you've got this bit like this and then the sides are both tucked in and ironed down flat. Whereas yours in America, it's just, you've got like a ribbon, haven't you really? It's more like a ribbon. And it is totally different from ours. I mean, we even have machines here that you can make your own seam binding. But it's always cut on the cross of the fabric. It's not cut on you know, the straight. There. Well, there we go, guys. Now, what I will do later is I will um, just sew round this and then I will pop a picture up of the uh, tag and the other tags that we've made today. I mean, they're so easy to make, but I would say be very, very careful with the glitter. Make sure you don't do what I did with the flocking and throw it all over the floor. Um, and there we are, day four done today. And I will take some pictures and pop them on the video. I hope you've enjoyed that. It's such a simple, quick thing to do. But, uh, you know, when you're sending a gift to somebody who does junk journaling, to stick a tag into um, your cards that you're sending or a little bit of happy mail, it's so lovely. And the ones I've sent out over the past few months, People love them. They absolutely love getting a tag. And I know myself, if I've got tags back, they're just so beautiful and I just love them. I really do. I love getting a tag. 
and it's just a, such a special thing you know and it, it's made by you and it's been made by love and they know that you've made it by hand it's a really really precious thing to have so thank you so much for being here today i'm so looking forward to today five tomorrow and also tomorrow morning seeing what linda's made because hers is the one i go and watch first and once i've watched linda's i then watch the other girls who have also joined in um i'm loving karen burr she's she's doing the, all the days like uh, Linda and myself the other girls are just doing a few like Rachel Reed she's done like she's only doing a couple of days but they're so inspirational and everybody's doing such different projects every day it's amazing it really is how different people interpret things so thank you so much for being with me today and I so hope to see you tomorrow so thank you bye